Dr. Bustamante, I understand that your research focuses on looking at differences between genetic data in different species. Can you explain that a little more? Sure. Well, so we work on a variety of different problems. Uh, in particular, we're interested in understanding how we can use genetic information to answer uh, fundamental problems in biology, medicine, and anthropology. Uh, much of our work actually focuses on humans and different human populations. In particular, we'd like to understand the structure of the human genome, how genetic variation is apportioned among different human populations, and why that's important for the design of medical genetic studies. Uh, in particular, we're motivated by the fact that the vast majority of genetic studies have focused almost exclusively on populations of European descent. And we think there are lots of opportunities uh, for uh, understanding new biology, as well as understanding um, differences in disease outcomes in different parts of the world by studying the genetics of complex disease in different human populations. And just how different is the genetic data in different populations? Well, it's, an inter it's a fascinating question. Um, I would say that what we've learned over the last, oh, four to five years is that genetic variation has a very peculiar structure. There are common genetic variants, and these are um, genetic variants that existed in the human gene pool at the time of the great human diasporas. So as different groups migrated out of Africa and colonized the rest of the world, um, we brought with us these genetic variants that existed in the uh, ancestral gene pool. Those genetic variants reach appreciable frequencies in Europe and Africa and Asia and Latin America. However, there are many genetic variants that have arisen since those great diasporas occurred, and in particular with the dramatic growth of human populations, uh, largely due to the advent of agriculture 10,000 years ago, there's a huge flurry of mutations that arose during the last 10,000 years. Those mutations, number one, are far rarer. So instead of being found at 20, 30 percent frequency, most of them are less than 1% frequency, so they're extraordinarily rare, but they're the bulk of genetic variation. That is, most genetic variants that you go out and find are the rare ones. And so there's a hypothesis out there that these rare genetic variants may in fact be more clinically relevant or biomedically relevant because, because they're rare, they may have actually arisen recently and may be impacting uh, different aspects of the biology in ways that mutations that have been around for a very long time you can imagine natural selection has been very efficient at weeding out those that, that were particularly bad. Can you give me an example of such a characteristic that you found in one population? Sure. So we were, for example, very interested in the genetic basis of blonde hair. It turns out there are two major human populations that have blonde hair, Europeans and Pacific Islanders. So we went out and uh, collected samples in the Solomon Islands, a very remote uh, part of the world, and uh, a project led by two postdocs in, in my lab. And uh, one of them, um, a guy named Sean Miles, had uh, done his PhD in that part of the world. And he, he went out and he collected uh, about a thousand samples from the Solomon Islands. We then brought them back um, to our lab at Stanford and we took the extremes of the distribution, those that had very striking blonde hair and those that had very dark hair. And when we compared those genetically, we found that there was a mutation in a gene called TERP1, which explained why we had the, the blonde hair phenotype. Mm. What was fascinating is that that mutation you only see in that part of the world. So here's huh. blonde hair, a very striking human phenotype, and individuals who are European have blonde hair for totally different genetic reasons than right. people in the Solomon Island who have blonde hair. And phenotypically, they look very, very similar. So if that's true for blonde hair, why couldn't that be true for diabetes, right? You can imagine right. that the mutations that underlie susceptibility to diabetes may be very different in Africa, in Asia, in India, in Latin America. In fact, groups that have gone out and actually studied this now, what they're finding. I see. And once you can understand those genetic differences, how does that, ex how does that apply to clinical, clinical Well, that's treatments? a great question. So. Um, there's definitely a big gulf between identifying a variant that has some increased risk with a certain trait and how you use that information clinically in terms of differential treatment. So our approach to that specific problem is to start from the very tippy top of the genes that we already know 
are clinically very important. So genes, for example, like CFTR, or mutations lead to cystic fibrosis, or genes like BRCA1 and 2, which um, underlie some amount of the hereditary breast cancer and ovarian cancer risk. Even for those incredibly important, what you might call VIP genes, we don't have a, not only not a, a complete, we have a very far from complete catalog of all the genetic variants that are gonna be important in those genes. So if you're uh, a woman and, and you go out and you have your genome sequenced and we were to look at your BRCA1 and 2 gene region, for many women, if they have a new mutation that hasn't been seen before, we won't know what to make of that, so-called right. variant of unknown significance. So we're working very hard to bring together epidemiological data, clinical testing data, literature data as part of a large collaboration called ClinGen, the ClinGen Consortium, to annotate all that information. Right. Well, it sounds like certainly a lot of advancements are going to be made in this field over the next few decades. We hope so. <laughs> we think it's really critically important. Right. Well, this is all very fascinating. Thank you so much Thank for your you time today. Thank you very much. Today. I really appreciate it.